Howdy again, this is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. And after five months in production, I finally finished my video series on uh, the South Bend Shaper. It's in the can, and now I can move on to other things. So, I've got quite a few things to cover in this video, so stick with me. I couldn't film down here for about three days. There was so doggone much water, you needed hip boots. And you can see the water flows away from my sump pump. And remember that the Three Stooges built this house and did all the plumbing as well. My video on case hardening was a resounding success, so I think I'm going to go ahead with a multi-part video series on heat treating. Let me tell you something about caseonite, because you know it's disappeared off the market and someone sent me the MSDS sheet, so let's take a look at that real quickly. You know, any document with a government signature or name on it, and this is Department of Labor, Labor uh, OSHA, it, it just strikes fear in my heart, especially from the IRS, and I've been getting a bunch of letters from the IRS lately telling me how good they are being to me, and, you know, but they still haven't given me my uh, latest... Uh, security check, whatever they call that. But anyway, here's the MSDS sheet on caseonite, and this is already, what, 10 years old or so, more than that, and it contains sodium ferrocyanide yellow preciate of soda, and that's what makes it so dangerous, but many people have told me that that has, it's just as safe as can be, you can feed it to you can put it in Gerber baby food, it's so safe, but who knows what the real truth is, but you can no longer get the wonderful caseonite. And on page two, it says, there is no hazard in the original form and in container. It might cause a possible slight short-term irritation of the skin and the mucous membrane. Flush your eyes with water, and wash your skin with water and don't breathe it. Did you watch this video? Over 750,000 people did, but in that video I used and talked about the Rose Index. And these are made by Rosenthal Machinery Company up in Wisconsin and these two, he makes them in two sizes, they're made of steel. And the complaint we got about these, and people do like them very much, is that they are a little bit high priced, admittedly. And Tim himself admits that. So he tried to come up with one that was just a little bit more affordable for the home shop machinist. So I have a couple of those now. Let's take a look. And here they are, hot off the press, and they're made of aluminum the one inch size and the two inch size and they are very hard anodized black to give it a pretty tough surface finish and there it is it's called the hobbyist model and I'm going to put the link in the description these are made in Wisconsin made in USA there's the patent number and the Rose Index logo so take a look at his website for pricing and how to order these if you're interested and he even put, I'm going to call it a protractor, degree marks all the way around on this. And I'll be showing how to use these in a later video in a few months. So that's the one inch size, or this is the two inch size. This is the one inch size, also marked hobbyist. Now I know there's some of you out there that tried to make these, and maybe even successfully, but these are very accurately made. And these are machined, they are not die cast, they are not uh, made in any other way than on a CNC machine, and it's not cheap to do things like that. And it's got the brass point here. Remember this is a fixturing device, if you're wondering what this is, it is not a work holding device. It has a square a hexagon and an octagon. So take a look down in the description for his website. 
My friend, the shop teacher out in California by the name of Roger Taylor sent me this great Peterbilt, well, not hood ornament, but I think these went on the side of a Peterbilt truck. Now, I believe this should be red. It's just so faded, and I might repaint it. Tell me if it is not to be red. Again, this is die cast. And there's all kinds of numbers on the back here, and I believe, I know that's reflecting real funny. I believe this is from 19, uh, well, I was going to say 95, but I don't really know. But there's two different numbers on here. So they apparently made this in chrome, like I have here, and in a gold finish. Not unlike the Mack Bulldog. I'm told that the chrome ones were for the Mack trucks that might have had a Cummins engine and different axles and so on. But if you had a Mack truck that had the Mack engine and the Mack driveline, it had a gold Bulldog on it. So maybe there's some truth to that in regards to the Peterbilt plaque, but I don't believe Peterbilt made any of their own engines. Correct me if I'm wrong. I want to show you something here that's pretty ridiculous. You know, I've been spending a lot of time working on the Shaper and looking at this Atlas 1940 catalog, which I think is the year that the Atlas Shaper was introduced, or it might have been 39, but let me show you a picture inside. Atlas sold a small grinder that could be attached to an Atlas shaper to turn it into a surface grinder. Now I'm sure this was an abject failure for them because it did not seem to appear in the later catalogs, at least the ones that I had looked at. And I, I just do not think there would be the rigidity there or the right speeds, but there is their description of it. And at first I thought, well, that's a grand idea. I think I'll put my Tom Thumb Grinder on my South Bend Shaper and see what happens. But I never did proceed with that, and I do not believe I will. You know, I'm always talking about Bernard Parallel Jaw Pliers, one of my favorite pliers. And because of that, someone, and I forgot their name, sent me a picture i got to show you. Here's an old lady pulling a tooth out of a young boy, probably her grandson, with the Bernard pliers. Old lady heck, she's five years younger than me, and matter of fact, I find her rather attractive. Can anyone out there tell me the exact paint number for a closing lathe or any of the closing machines? And I don't mean battleship gray or navy gray, I mean the original color, like you might see a little bit right here, this has been painted. And I would like it either in an Ace Hardware number or Sherwin-Williams. I really would like to paint my horizontal mill. Thank you to David, this is a mouthful, Ostrovsky, out in Lost Wages, who sent me this 50 caliber screwdriver. All polished up nice, and it's one of the four ways got the two tips on this end, you can pull that out, and it's got the two tips on the other. So that's pretty snazzy. Just don't carry this on an airplane or any other place where they're scared to death anymore. You know, it reminds me of a little pen that my friend Lee gave me a long time ago that also looks like a bullet, but it's a bullet pen. And in fact, this is a Fisher Space Pen, if you know what a Fisher Space Pen is. So this is really neat. To, because you can hold it in your pocket, although you can't anymore because, uh, you know, this country is running so scared you can't carry a knife, you can't do this, you can't do that. All right, don't get me started. Jay Miller from down in Crawford, Texas is a YouTube friend of mine and recently made a really neat video. So take a look at this. Do a search on YouTube. It's really worth your time. And he's quite a photographer as well. You know, we machinists do a lot of measuring, and often we need shim stock or feeler gauges and so on. And I noticed that with most of my feeler sets, and I probably got a dozen of them, they do not go down to one thousandth. For instance, that's two thousandths, and it's mutilated, and there's a three. And even in my shim sets, now this one goes down to a thousandth but it's long missing because this, of course, came from an auction. That's 2,000. 
So I thought, well, I need some one thousandths. And my dad always talked about cigarette papers because he said they're one thousand thick. So I thought, well, I don't have any cigarette paper, but I'm a little embarrassed to buy them because people are going to think I'm a pothead. So I went over to Ottawa to one of those cigarette stores. And then, of course, I bought a Hershey bar, you know, because ostensibly I came in there to buy candy. But, uh, oh, oh, by the way, do, do you have any of uh, those papers that men roll tobacco in to roll your own? And she says, uh, yeah, just a minute. And uh, she, she disappeared, and then she came back and said, uh, that'll be just a minute. So in the meantime, I'm, I'm telling her, I'm apologizing because I'm so embarrassed. I'm saying, you know, I, I don't really smoke. And uh, she's probably thinking, yeah, right. Well, then a guy comes down the aisle on, the, on my side of the counter, an employee, and, and he's carrying these and said, here. And he was kind of gruff. And I said, how much are these? I said, well, a dollar. But there they are. But look, they're made for marijuana. So I was just shocked. I left humiliated. But they come out like little Kleenex tissues. Because, of course, people are stoned when they're doing this and have trouble manipulating thin things. But this is 1,000 thick. And see, I thought I was going to buy a pack of Bull Durham. Remember that? It came, it was tobacco in a little cloth bag. And it came with enough rolling papers. But this is uh, watermarked. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But it's watermarked with marijuana. So I, I'm not happy about this. But when you see this laying on my bench, don't, don't call me a stoner or anything like that. Although I'm thinking I need to get some of this to help me sleep. They say that <coughs> medicinal... <clears throat> marijuana can can help you sleep so I don't know but this this the nice thing about this is it gives you pure freedom freedom from worry freedom from work so you just kind of hang around on the front porch I think hope it didn't run over anybody's feelings there let's get back to these swivel jaws you might have watched my video on that and this is the one that I case hardened as you recall and there was much ado about losing this pin. So w one of my methods, of course, was to make this little magnet. So at least it's going to stick into one side or another. And I received many other excellent ideas from viewers as to how to ca uh, captivate the pin or get around that. But Ellie Price from out east sent me this completed one. Now he's... He only put the teeth on one side. Yeah, that's from L.A. Price in April. But he used O-rings, and they are staked in there. Can you see that? So that's pretty awesome. And he used a much larger pin. did a real nice job on that too. He was a tool and die maker when he was in his prime. Thank you, Ellie. And that's a good idea. And that could be incorporated into one of the steel ones. If you're interested in heat treating, buy yourself this book over eBay. And finally, thank you to Matt Stewart from Arizona for sending me this pocket knife and straight razor book. I think it's all for collectors. So that should be some interesting reading. Come cold weather or a rainy day. Thank you. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. The rest of the items I have to hold over. Watch my many, many other videos if you have time.